Okay, all yours. All right, excellent. Well, welcome in everybody. Um, as I was pouring through all the ideas for the top 10 things teachers wanted, it was a lot. So it was hard to choose 10 things to share with you today. Um, I hope I'm bringing information to you that is exciting and answer some of your questions about using your cricket in your classroom or using your creative skills for a teacher in your life. Um, so I'm very excited um, that you all are here. And we're just gonna dive in because doing 10 projects in an hour is a lot. So my first project has to do with working on a book nook. So a lot of uh, classes have special spaces set aside for students to go and relax or read a book and kind of lounge around. So I thought a super fun project would be a a pillow cover for your book nook. Now I chose this project to kick us off because I'll be using the auto press behind me um, to get started and that sometimes takes a while to, to let the project cool down. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. I'm using infusible ink for this first project and infusible ink comes in a package like this. Now, when you take it out of the package, it looks a little dull and you think, how can that sheet become this bright, colorful design? Well, I'm gonna show you how. Let me go ahead and start, my auto press is heated up. Okay, so I got that part done. I'm gonna switch to my overhead camera and show, actually, first I'm gonna share my screen and then I'm gonna switch to my overhead camera. So in design space, I have projects set up um, for all of the projects we're making today. Uh, so after the class, uh, you can go to my profile and find all the projects. I'll make them live after the class. So you can, I didn't want to give anybody a sneak peek. So you'll be able to see the projects we're going to make in the class today. So this first project is a pillow for your book nook. Now I did my, I shaped the pillow um, design to fit onto 12 by 12. So the largest I can do is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. I pulled up a few other designs um, from Design Space, like for a chill pillow. Um, I love this one here, Reading Gives Your Imagination Wings. So if the one I picked out, Reading Takes You Places, doesn't work for your classroom, I've pulled out a couple extra ones that you can use. So once you have your image sized, the largest you can do is 11 and a half inches you click the make it icon. And this takes you over to the prepare screen. Now, when you're working with any type of heat material or material that requires heat to put it on as an application, you want to make sure that you mirror your image so that it cuts on the reverse. So when it cuts, it will flip, it, it'll flip the image. And then you just, um, you just hit create continue and then select the material. Again, for this one in particular, I'm using the infusible ink transfer sheet and I'm ready to send it over to my machine. Now I did go ahead and already, um, I've already cut the machine, the transfer sheet. Let me just, sorry, my camera, get that set up. Okay, here we go. Do you have to have Cricut access for the designs? Many of the, all of the designs are available in Cricut Access. Um, you can upload your own designs if you have an image you want to use. And you can, a lot, there are a lot of free images to use in Design Space. So um, when you have a Cricut machine, you do get, when you first get your machine, you get 30 days free trial. So that's a great opportunity to see if the, if the system is work, it will work for you, the Cricut Access, and you can also purchase images a la carte. So if you wanted to make this image, but you didn't have Cricut Access, you could just, um, just purchase this one image and make it as many times as you'd like. Now you can, you might not be able to tell, I've already cut this out. So all you have to do with infusible ink transfer sheet is crack and peel away the bits that you're not keeping on your project. So you just remove these and they, they just like, you know, peel off. And as you remove the parts that you're not keeping, you'll begin to see your design show up in the background. And then when you turn it over, you can see that's the reverse of it. 
So we'll just keep pulling off a few more things. Now I did, because to save us time, I did go ahead and um, cut this out already and I have it weeded out. This is called weeding, where you remove these little excess bits. Now, if you're careful, you can save those and reuse them on another project. So I'm, I'm never that careful. So it's hard for me to do that, but you just keep peeling away and your design will reveal itself. All right. So let me grab my sheet that I've already peeled and I placed it on the pillow. So I've removed all of the, the parts of the design that I want to keep. I've turned it over. So this is the background, the infusible ink side. I've turned it over so the infusible ink is face down on the pillowcase. Now I'm using a Cricut blank. When you use infusible ink, it infuses into the fabric. So the ink becomes one with the fabric. So you do need to make sure you use special blanks that have um, a finish on it so that the ink transfer will absorb right down into that. Um, these pillowcases, Colleen, are available at Michael's, um, and it's, I think this one is like 17 by 17. So once you have it placed down on your, you want to use a pad underneath, and you can use um, the easy press. I'm going to show you the auto press today. So I'm just going to put it in, and let's make sure I have the right settings. So I've got my my easy press pad in there. And I'm just gonna make sure it's within the heat plate. So the auto press gives it constant, constant heat across the whole cover of it. Um, and let's just make sure we have our heat settings right with the heat guide. So I needs to be, um, let's see, I'm using, you wanna choose your material. So I'm using infusible ink transfer sheet. I'll be using the Cricut pillow cover. No, nope, I don't want to go to sleep. There we go. I'm using the pillow cover and the easy press mat. And there we go. So it tells me 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So on the dial, I have it set to 400 degrees. And then I'm going to set it for 60 seconds. So let me just increase my time here. And I'm going to close it up. Now, if you're using the Easy Press 3, you can just do the same settings for your um, on the Easy Press 3. You just do those same settings and you put it on, and it's got the timer on there. The pad goes right underneath the um, underneath the pillowcase onto the base of the auto press. Well, good question. Are there any math files in Cricut Design Space? There are a lot of teacher files. Um, so you might find ones that are particular to math or not. Um, I'm not sure exactly which, what you're looking for there. Now, let me go back. I'm going to go while that's heating up. So once it's done heating, this is going to pop open and you let it sit there because you really have to make sure you let the infusible ink press down, it's at a high temperature, 400 degrees. So you want to let it, um, let it cool. So while that's working and cool, and it's gonna pop up in a second, I kinda wanna wait, okay, there it goes. Now it pops up, I'm not gonna touch it. So I'm just gonna let it cool off. While that is cool, I'm gonna show you my next project, which is another t-shirt. So let's see. You, the infusible ink sheets come in packages of um, four, like four different colors. It depends on the box, but you get like a lot. There's a lot of packages that have different designs in there. Um, there's like mermaid packages. There's all kinds of designs, camping, solid colors, lots of fun things that you can do with the infusible ink. All the different ones. Like I think this is such a cute one. Looks like a composition notebook. So those are a few of the different um, designs. And you also have pens that you can use with the infusible ink that will, um, that you can draw with your machine, draw out a design on um, paper and then infuse that onto any, sub, any um, pillowcase, your mugs, all that kind of fun stuff. 
Now, this one is, I've gone ahead and used this brown iron on and placed this first on the sheet, on the shirt. I did that at the 315 degrees for about 20 seconds. You don't have to put it on for long because I'm going to add another little design here. And this place is right inside the whole, the nooks here. Just place that there. I'm gonna use that as one marker and then just place it down here onto the other one. There we go. Pop that right into there. Goes right in that little hole there. And then you'll see it just will go back. Now I'm gonna put this back on the easy press. So when you're working with two different types of, not well, they're not different types, they're both iron-on vinyl, I'm going to put um, a Teflon sheet over it so that it doesn't, so that the part I've already done the iron on vinyl and removed, it won't damage it. So I can just put that right down on top of it. Now, when you're doing a t-shirt for your first day of, of school, my general rule of thumb is to place the design about three inches down from the collar and I center it on the shirt. So I do, you want to do a pre-press on this and then, um, and then, so find your middle and then line it up, okay? Now I'm gonna bring this back over to my heat press, but what I need to do first is adjust my heat again. So my heat here has to be at 315 degrees for um, a lower, a less amount of time. So it's 315 degrees for 40 seconds. So I just dial back my heat for about, for 40 seconds, and it'll take a few minutes to cool down. But I'm gonna move this over. We'll bring this back underneath the light, underneath the camera, so we can see the big reveal. And I'll switch my shirt out to go over here. So when that's cooled, I can, I can just heat that up again, and it'll do my shirt. Now, the great thing about the auto press is it's open so high, so I can really get under there and move things around that I need to. I don't want to forget my little Teflon sheet there. You can use butcher paper. I'll put that there. Now, let's go and see what the infusible ink did by changing over to the overhead camera. It's always fun to see the reveal. So, Charlotte, the, um, this design is in Design Space, and if you look up my name, um, Kesley Anderson, are you guys ready? Meeting takes you places. So this is how the ink left my sheet. This is, this is what we started with. We started with this. It heated up and transferred all of that ink onto the design to look like that. So there's your, there's your difference. So you look at it on the sheet and you're like, oh, it's so dull. I want something a little bit more bright. But once you heat it up, it becomes so pretty and bright. Now, keep in mind that the infusible ink is now part of my pillowcase. Unlike iron-on vinyl where you can still feel it on top, this infusible ink is now part of my, oh, it's now part of my, um, it's now part of my design. And then all I have to do, I've got an old pillow behind me here that I just thought would be so fun to put the pillow in it so that it zippers open, it has an invisible zipper. You can put the zipper on the top of your design or the bottom of your design. You can take the pillow out and wash the pillow, wash your pillowcase. Um, you can add a design on the back, maybe put your classroom or something like that. Uh, the teacher's name on the back of the pillow be fun. All right, and then I'm just gonna zip it up and we're gonna put that on my tape on my chair. Now that tef the Teflon sheet, somebody asked, where did you get the Teflon sheet? I think I got that at Michael's like years ago. So you probably can still get that. Okay. So all the SVG files I'm gonna show you today are all part of Cricut Access and Design Space. Um, some of them I've designed using Cricut Access and some of them were already designed. So that teacher shirt, let me come back in here. 
um, the shirt for the teacher is right in design space. So if I go, let's see, cancel. Now I did combine some fonts for that, for that made to teach shirt. I, I used two different fonts and I used the offset feature to get the knockout. So this was the design. So I used um, some images and I combined and merged the images with the text. So you can, in design space, you can totally do that. You can mix and match and bring things together. So why don't I show you how I did, um, I just brought different designs in. The Inspire is one of them. Let's see, this is gonna pop open. So here we have this is the design. So I used to get them made to, I used a font called BFC Frosty Fonts. And then I used um, a Teach With Love image and took off part of the With Love and added Teach. So let me show you how you would do that. I'll show you how to combine real quick. We're gonna take our text. Now don't forget that um, this class is being recorded. So if, and I only have an hour. So if it goes by quickly, it is being recorded and you'll be able to watch it and kind of pause it and see how I did the different steps um, to get where I'm going. So let's see, this was BFC Winter, I think. So I just find that font, QRSTU, nope. BFC Frosty Winters. So you just find a font you like and, um, Hmm. BFC Frosty. There we go. So I bring in this font, made two, and I usually do my shirts about nine and a half inches, about like that. And then I have a word inspire that I had pulled up to use. So I would bring that right on top of my font here. And then I'm going to add an offset. So an offset feature adds an outline to your image. So I'm just gonna add a really small offset feature and apply that and then take the offset and the text and knock that out. So I'm gonna slice that and then delete it. So I'm gonna slice that and then we're gonna delete the little inside pieces because I don't need those. And I'm going to delete the word inspire. So now, Kesley, we have a lot of questions about material makeup. Can I just pipe in something real yes, quick? Yes, absolutely. So when you are using infusible ink, you want to use high polyester. It cannot be high cotton. You want the polyester to be 70 to 95%. If it has too much cotton or any other fiber in it, like rayon, your colors are going to be faded and they are not going to be vibrant and they might wash out. Thank you. Yeah, you do want to make sure that you have the right materials. So I just had to redo my outline. I didn't get quite enough of an outline there. So let me just delete these. Delete that. Delete that. Now I have that space in between my letters. So that's how you would do the t-shirt. And I just heard my machine beep and let me know that the temperature has changed. So let's go back over here. I've got it all set up. And all I'm gonna do is pull it down and let it, and let it heat up and do its thing. Now, while you're over here, you may see I added um, a hello to my wall. I cut this out of removable vinyl. So you could do this on your door, on a hallway as you come in. I have a piece of blue painter's tape that I lined the bottom of my transfer tape up with so that you can see where it lined up on the wall. So that helps me um, make it super easy to line up my design so it goes straight against the wall. And then I've added these little hearts across the top. So I've, I've got some that I cut out and I'm just gonna, oops, there we go. We're gonna let that cool off because you wanna peel when cool on the iron-on. So I've got these little hearts. This is the removable vinyl. 
So removable vinyl is perfect for the classroom. You can put it on walls, on bulletin boards, on whiteboards, and it does come off without leaving any residue. So um, I can use it with confidence on my wall that it's going to stay there and I'm not gonna have to worry about, um, about it damaging my wall. Now, I wanna show you, I'm putting this on here without transfer tape. Sometimes when you move elements, you're gonna to wanna to use transfer tape because you have little bits and pieces. These are such big pieces, I just can do it with my fingers and move it. So let me go back over here. We'll show it back on the wall because all I'm gonna do now is peel this off of my backing. Just gonna fold my backing in half and we'll walk this right off the backing. Now you can do this with students' names. You could do this with really anything um, in your classroom. And then I'm gonna place that on the wall. Now, in the first 24 hours, you might get a little bit of buckling or um, it just may not hold down as permanent. So I like to just walk by and rub it and make sure it's gonna stay where I want it to stay um, and that the humidity doesn't move it or anything like that. Okay, I'm gonna bring this over here while this is cooling. So we'll be able to see that in a minute. And I'll close this up and lock it so that you can, um, you can see the hello on the back. And that was just made with removable vinyl. I used my blue painter's tape to get that line to line up my transfer tape with. So that's always fun. Um, now let me go back in and share my screen. So I keep seeing people asking about an educator section on in design space. So if you go into design space, there are um, images. So let's go to images. And in the image library, you can go to image sets. And then you can do a search for like classroom. And you can search for like, there's a whole bunch of classroom stuff here. So you have, um, you know, just lots of options of groupings of images that are specifically for your classroom. Um, so like if you're doing a space day course, if you're doing a whole decor of space to match your pillow, you have all of these different images to work with. And these are all cuttable images. Um, so you can cut these out for your bulletin boards or anything like that. So you want to go into image sets and then look for classroom or if you're doing a specific design, you could look in there for that. So I hope that helps answer that question. All right, are we ready to see how our t-shirt turned out? Okay, let me stop sharing this. When layering, do you use to keep the layers in place? What do you use to keep the layers in place? Um, so the your for something like this, for the iron-on, it does have a sticky the this pla this plastic piece is sticky so it will stay on your shirt so i'm just peeling this up i've let it cool the really big trick to being successful with t-shirts is to be patient and let it cool especially if you're layering or anything like that and then you just walk it off your shirt and there we go now we've got a really fun shirt to wear for your first day of school or you know Get teacher's night, anything, or back to school night, anything like that. You can make this up for your entire team of teachers, do different color um, shirts. So different teams have different colors. You can add your subject. So if you teach math or science, maybe you could add like a little globe on here for social studies, really like make it custom and personal. But this is a great kick kickoff shirt to start with. Um, so Aaron's saying the only way to use infusible ink is you have to have a press machine. So Aaron, the infusible ink works at a really high temperature. Your iron-on vinyl, you can use with a home iron. The infusible ink, you have to press it at 400 degrees. So you need um, some sort of press that will do it at the 400 degrees. Your little mini press works if you're doing small, um, small items. I think your mini press gets to 400 degrees. Um, but if you're doing something larger than you need an easy press 
or um, something that will heat up to 400 degrees and allow you to use at high temperature. Oh, Melissa, great question. She says, hello looks larger than the regular mat. How did I make it? You're right, hello is bigger. I used smart vinyl in a maker three that allowed me to cut 12 inches tall by however long I wanted to get. So I think this is like 36 inches. Um, you could place it together. So you could, if you had, if you didn't have like a maker three or explore three and you were cutting it on a mat, you would just cut it in two pieces. So you would actually just have a little, pick a spot and have a little line there. So I did cut it using the smart vinyl so I could go really big with it. Okay. When you use the removable vinyl, does it leave any, I think that's saying any residue. The removable vinyl will not leave any residue. It won't leave any marks or anything. The only, um, the only time I've had um, any, you know, it's not even an issue with it, but if I have, I've left removable vinyl up in the sunlight and the sunlight has faded the color around the removable vinyl. So when I peeled off the removable vinyl, you can see um, the faded color behind it, much like a picture frame on a wall. If you leave it there too long, you'll get that faded background. All right, so let's, Anita, I know you guys are keeping Anita busy. Um, so we will keep answering your questions as we can. You have live. a lot of people wanting to get onto your profile oh. and where to see your Facebook and that information. So I'm going to let you take that one. Okay. Yeah, I'll jump into that. So why don't I go ahead and share my screen here and we'll go into Cricut. So in Cricut, if you go to like the home screen, now this you have to do, unless they've changed it on your desktop or laptop. I don't think you can um, do a search for some for a profile on a mobile device. In the um, keyword search here, just type in Kesley, K-E-S-L-E-Y, Anderson. And when you do a search, my projects, some of the projects I have that I've shared with the community pop up here and my um, community member pops up right here. So now you can um, follow me here and you'll see all the different projects that I've shared with the community. Um, like this 4th of July bucket I shared. Um, a couple, a lot of these are shared and the teacher ones are, will be shared after this class. So definitely you wanna make sure you pop on there and then all my teacher projects I will share. So we have all these, we've done like two of them so far. We've done the book nook pillow, the made to teach and the hello wall sign. So why don't we get back on track and I'm gonna show you how to offset names using the offset feature. So one of the things um, that I notice a lot of teachers do is have different areas in the classroom like desks and things where you'll put a student's name or on a bulletin board and you wanna give it a little pop. So to do that, you'll do an outline to a name. So you'll do an offset here. Now, what I've done is I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a new text box. So you just select your text box here and you can type in a name. So you just type in, let's say Anita. So we can just type in Anita's name, size it to the size we want it to be. So let's go ahead and get that big. And then we're gonna add an offset to the name. So the light purple here is the text and we're gonna add an offset. What an offset does is it creates an extra layer in design space um, that is an outline of what you currently have on your, on your canvas. So now I have a really nice offset for Anita's name. I'm gonna print, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that out of cardstock and then assemble it. But I wanna show you a tricky way I did it. I did use slice on this design here. Let me see if I can ungroup this. So I used slice on here so that I didn't have to glue out each letter of the name. So to use slice, what you do is select the two layers and you go down to the bottom of your screen and you hit slice. Now, 
when I cut this, you'll see what I mean. So I have the outline with the name cut through it. That's how you use slice. Let me show you how that comes out when you cut it. So if I were to do the Daisy name again, and I'm gonna go ahead and make it. Yes, Carrie, you can change the spacing. You can edit, let me show you how to do that. You can edit the, um, spacing when you type in text you can edit the spacing the line spacing so if you have multiple lines you can align it um you can curve your text all in the font edit bar right here all that happens right up there so i want to make sure i don't send that to my machine to make it so let me go ahead and do make it so another little trick here i have one name on the top and one the offset on the background to save time, instead of having to send two mats through my machine, I'm going to move this background layer so that it's on the same screen as the top layer. So now I have both of these on my canvas and I just, I mean, on my prepare mat, and I just need to remember, okay, the background is on the bottom, the offsets on the bottom and the cutout is on the top. So when I, when I, um, I'm gonna stop share so I can show you this, what that means. Um, let me grab my, here we go. I'm gonna grab this. So when I have, when I lay out my design, let's go back over to my overhead. Ah. Okay. Can you use this for cardstock or is it for vinyl? You can do cardstock or vinyl. Um, it, like you can find, Michael's has 12 by 24 inch cardstock. So you can, um, to make that hello sign or you can use vinyl instead of cardstock on this. It's totally up to you. So I've, I've got my mat prepped and this is where the name will cut out and this is where the offset will be. So I've moved those to be onto one mat. So I don't have to send two mats through my machine. And then I just pick my, um, your, I'm doing 80 pound cardstock and I, I would send that through to cut. Now, because we don't have too much time, I've already done the cutting. So this was the, um, this is what the slice version looks like. And I'm just gonna move these out. Let's see, move some things out of the way here. So I did a slice on the name and then I kept the inner parts because what I would normally do, I think our normal inclination would be to cut out each letter and then glue each letter on the offset piece like this. So you're gluing all these little pieces and trying to line everything up. By doing the offset and cutting the outline, you have a much cleaner gluing process. So I'm gonna set my inside pieces aside and I'm going to grab my adhesive. And you can use any type of glue adhesive if you're running this through your laminator. Um, you can use you know, your, your glue adhesive, um, back in the day when my mom used to do this and we used to help her, we used um, stick glue a lot. So much of our stuff we used glue sticks with. Um, so I used to spend my summers helping my mom prep her classroom for the coming year. Uh, and it, we loved doing it, it so much fun. And I, gosh, I wish I had a cricket back then. So now I'm just gonna take this and line this up on the offset piece here. And then to get my um, to get my little inside pieces set up, I'll take my letter that I cut out, and I'm just going to do a little dot dot there, and take the inside and put that on, and then pull this up like that. All right, and then same thing with the D. I'm just going to put my D down, put a little dot up. Now, obviously, if I'm at home doing this, um, I, I would definitely, you know, take my time and make sure I got everything stuck down. But in the interest of our time here today, like I would go back and put a little dollop under there. Then you can throw this through the laminator and you've got your 
your students' names ready for the class. You can put them on desks. You can make them smaller and put them on paper clips um, and then hang their artwork or their schoolwork underneath and everybody knows where their name is. This is, this is really a fun, using that offset tool is really fun. Okay, Woo. how are we doing? Uh, what type of glue are you using? This is a great glue. It's um, by iCraft, it's called Ultra Bond, but you can really use any adhesive. Um, this dries really quickly and it dries clear. So that's what I look for in a glue that would dry quickly and it dries clear. It is a permanent glue and it's also um, acid free so it won't yellow. So that's, that's I know I love that little nozzle. I do have um, a pin taped to the top because sometimes it gets clogged if I leave the top off. So it really does dry quickly. But another project I used um, the glue with was a fun little banner. Now this is also in design space. This one is one I, I created the pencil myself. There's lots of pencil choices in design space. I just wasn't getting one that gave me um, a bulletin boardish feel, you know, that would be easy to piece together. So I used shapes in design space and made my own pencil shape. And I'll show you how it cut out. So I cut all of them out seven times. Each piece cut out seven times. I gave myself an offset and then I have all these little pieces. So again, all I need to do is grab my glue, glue this together. This um, little cutout here was done using like a wavy border. I feel like I need to do a video on just how I did that. So you wanna make sure we get that lined up right. So I just line that on there. This is a great, um, I just think like if you are a teacher and you have a parent who can do this for you, how fun, or if you have, if you have young kids at home this summer um, and they're willing to help you get your classroom set up, this is something that we would have done for my mom. And it's so funny, I, I've been thinking a lot about my mom. She used to take coloring books and we would um, take the image and project it onto the wall. We did Smurfs and monsters, all kinds of fun stuff. Every year she'd have a different theme, um, but she really, she, we really, she had us working all summer, like getting our line straight with our Crayola markers and everything. It was fun. So I cut this out with just cardstock from Michaels, and um, and then I would, if I, you know, laminate it. You can put your ribbon behind, hide your ribbon behind this and make it into a banner. You could just hang it up onto your bulletin board, staple it up, use Velcro if you want to on the back of it, if you change out your words. Um, you can, you know, apply it that way. You could just do one and write the whole writing or write on one pencil if you didn't have space to do a whole banner. But these are all the seven, this says writing. So I did seven different pencils and it really, it really went together quickly. Once I designed the pencil, um, it all went together super, super duper quickly. So I'll show you that one. Um, the glue does not make the paper bumpy. I use that glue a lot for um, so many different projects that are paper-based for cards and things like that. And it does not make the paper bumpy. So um, I, would, I would use that, but again, like you can use, it's not like Elmer's glue where Elmer's glue is, um, has the white as a water-based. It's, it's not a water-based glue. So here's this project and I did the offset on the letters. So you'll see the offset on the letters. Let me find my little pencil. Um, it's in here somewhere. Let's see. There's the pencil. So the pencil is in different layers. And when you send it to your machine, it will cut, am I sure? Yeah, it'll cut out each layer on different mats. So you'll get your, um, your glue on different mats. And this is what I wanna show you here. When you come to like the backgrounds, this just gives you one pencil, but let's say you wanna make seven pencils. You can increase project copies, increase that up to seven, 
six, seven for writing and hit apply. Then it duplicates that one image seven times. So I would do the pencils first and because you only need one of each letter. And, and there you go. We have all your erasers and they cut out on one sheet at a time. And Kesley, can you please repeat the name of the glue and is it available at Michael's? I will repeat the name of the glue. I honestly am not sure where I got the glue. Um, it's called Ultra Bond by iCraft. And it's um, a permanent adhesive free. Really, just look for one, a glue that is permanent and adhesive free, acid free. Sorry, I say, keep saying adhesive free. <laughs> Ultra Bond, is, it is available at Michael's. Awesome. Can it's you drop, on their website. Yep. Can, can you drop the link in the chat? I can do that. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's fun when you see something somebody else uses and it's like, wow, that worked out really well. Okay. I'm going to share another project because along with our pillow in the book nook um, is, oops, let me see. That's not the one I want to share. Um, I know you, the, you teachers, all the teachers out there, you guys have tons of books that you've provided to your own library in your school. So having little tags to put in the books so people know where to return them is super important. Now for this project, I pulled out the Cricut Joy because it's small and compact and it may be, um, you know, like you can take the Cricut Joy to your classroom with you and use it in and out of the classroom. So I did pull up the Cricut Joy and we're just gonna make, I'm gonna show you on this how you can make it using um, pens and it cuts. So I've got my Cricut Joy here next to me. Let's get to the point where it tells me to select my materials. So I'm gonna just use um, my material today. I'm using um, Smart Paper. So I'm just gonna look up Smart Paper. The reason I'm using the Smart Paper is because it has, um, adhesive on the back. So I'm using a smart sticker cardstock. So I'm just going to use that one to make these labels because they ha already have the adhesive on the back. So I can just peel that off and put it right in there. Now, it'll, your software will walk you through the steps. So first, I'm going to load my black pen and it's going to do, it's going to write up the black, um, the black words first. And then I'll add in my colorful pen next. So I'm just gonna open that up. I slide my pen in. Now there are different pens for the Cricut Joy and the your Cricut Explorer or Maker. The Cricut Joy has sm smaller pens, so they um, they fit in. They're designed to fit in the Cricut Joy, and the Explorer and Maker have different pens. And it's because the the casing is different between the two machines. So you do need to have different pens for each machine. I can get this out now. And the other thing I love about the smart cardstock, again, it's smart, so I don't need to load in my mat. I can just load in the, um, the smart cardstock and it will work for me. I'm gonna slide my machine back here instead of the machine. So you can see this. All right. So now it's loading. And all I do is just click the go button and you'll see it'll start writing the black. And then it'll pause and I'll have to write in with the other color. Let me get that pushed back up. Sorry, guys. There we go. Oh, cool, guys. So have you ever cut felt? What blade and cut would you use? If I cut felt on my maker, I use um, the fabric mat. Either machine, you want to use a fabric mat, and I use my rotary cutter on the maker. Um, and then there is a fabric um, tip, it's pink, if you're using an explorer. And then you want to, um, you have to put some type of uh, bond, bonding on the back of the fabric on the explorer. So it has some hold to it. Yes, this paper is available on for your maker and your um, explore machines. I just pulled out the Cricut for this project because not only did I want to show you this little thing with the Cricut, the Cricut has smart vinyl and I wanted to show you this. So the smart vinyl 
comes in really long strips. So you can create an entire border out of removable vinyl on your Cricut Joy for your classroom. So this was all done in one cut. Um, and your, your Cricut, uh, the Cricut Joy vinyl really comes in long cuts, just like it does for your maker too. Um, this is a 48 foot piece. Okay, now it, my machine has paused and it's ready for me to put in my next color. So I'm gonna close that one up, put another color in. It's really fun to be able to switch out your colors. Pop that in and then I hit, it'll tell me to go. Okay, let's see, Vanessa, do you need a mat with smart paper? No, that's what makes smart paper so cool is you don't need a mat with smart paper. You can just cut with your smart paper um, without having to use a mat. That's the benefit of the smart paper. It's fast because you don't need to have a mat and you can just load it and go. I am gonna chime in on that. The smart paper or the smart vinyl, whatever smart material you're trying to cut, it does need to be bigger than six inches. Very good point, Anita, because what, you can use your scraps of smart vinyl on a mat and cut um, cut with any Cricut machine. To use the smart vinyl without a mat, it has to be the, the full size, the full width of the smart vinyl. So like this is four and a half. If I were on my other machine, it would need to be 13 inches. And I can, um, I, that's, so you have to have the right width. You have to have your full sheet basically and enough length to cut with it. Okay, so now I can unload this guy and show you that. So now I could make a whole sheet of these and then this would just peel off and I could put it right in the book. So you could make an entire sheet for yourself. If you are you know, a parent in a classroom, you can make these for a teacher and, and gift that to the teacher, which I just, I love that. And I love that it's on the Cricut Joy. So you could, and, and again, you can do this on any machine, but you can do it, um, you can design it on the go. And then when you get home to do it, you can do it at home. Or if you're a teacher and you have like just a little cubby hole space, the Cricut Joy is so cute for that. Um, so that's, that's the, that's what that project is. And I love, you could even, um, cut out vinyl and just use transfer tape and apply the vinyl into a book. I just thought like being able to add that little decoration was super cute. So while I'm in my overhead, I'm going to show you another project I made, um, that coordinated with my hello wall. I got to find it first. Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay. So this project I did in design space and um, Mrs. Nicely is a new teacher. So I did this for her and I wanted to show you all because we, I've been doing a lot of vinyl on flat surfaces. So I took my same hearts from the hello wall. I made them smaller to fit on the jug. And then I have um, this design here and I'm, I'm just gonna use transfer tape and I'll put transfer tape over this vinyl. So I pre-cut my permanent vinyl here. Now, permanent vinyl can, as long as what you're putting it on can go in the dishwasher, you can put your um, permanent vinyl in the dishwasher as well. So permanent vinyl will go in the dishwasher as long as what you're putting it on will go in the dishwasher. So if you're making mugs or a tumbler for a teacher or for yourself as a teacher, because heaven knows you, our teachers need to be able to hydrate and have their caffeine. Um, you guys are heroes. So I, I understand that. I know my mom used to always come back and um, at the end of the day with enough caffeine and, and water. <laughs> um, so I'm just peeling off the backing of the vinyl onto the transfer tape and I'm pushing down the smart vinyl does tend to be a little bit um, stiffer because the backing needs to be stiffer to go through your machine so I do find like I do like a little roll as I go so like I'll roll it back and then where it sticks I'll just kind of fold it and press it back like that 
And that does, that does seem to help. So we're just gonna keep pressing and rolling this back. I, will, I need to call this the rock and roll system or something, but don't ever get frustrated. Like if you're having a hard time getting your vinyl off, um, just kind of give yourself a step away and come back. And um, you wanna make sure you're using the right type of transfer with the right type of vinyl. So Cricut has two different transfer tapes. One is called Strong Grip and one is regular standard grip. So for your smart vinyl that is uh, not glitter, oops, got that on my finger. You would just use your standard grip transfer tape. Almost there, there we go. And I have a little E that came off, so I'm gonna put that back down. Now I could wait until I get it put onto the, Top the glass, but I'm just going to put it right back here. So that'll fit like that. Okay, now I do want to remind everybody this class is being recorded. And after the class, we do have a surprise as a thank you to all of our teachers from Cricut. So make sure you hang around. You have to be here. So I hold this up like a taco and I put down one side first and then I'll put down the other side. And I just roll that around the glass and press it down. And usually pressing down with my finger is enough. And then I'll just kind of pull this back and just walk it back like this. And your transfer tape is reusable. So you can use it more than one time. In fact, I'm gonna just reuse it to pick up the wish here. And this is a little jar for your students to let you know um, things that they're thinking about in class or things that they need help with. And it just says, I wish my teacher knew. And I, in the project, you'll be able to edit the name. So any project I have, I did try and keep it so that you can edit the name um, before making it. So, you know, if you're not Mrs. Nicely, who's an awesome new teacher, She's, she's brand new to teaching, so she's gonna need all her cute classroom decor. Um, so she is, um, yeah. So if you, what am I saying? If <laughs> you can, um, in the project, you'll be able to change that. And so I'm just gonna pop down that wish and that's just gonna go right down there like that. And I'm kind of holding this part of the transfer tape off so I don't peel anything back up. But there we go. And then I can put this transfer tape back on the paper here. And I can use this again another time. So let's put this right on here. So like when I get to my next project, which is my cat, my um, rainbow files, I can just use that transfer tape again and cut with that. Um, yes, so Susie, you will be able to rewatch this. I know I'm going through it quickly because there's so much information to share but it is being recorded by Michaels. So you'll be able to go back and watch it. I'm using the Cricut um, transfer tape for, this, for these projects. That one was the standard grip transfer tape. So it's not, um, it's not it, it works with regular vinyl. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my main camera here to show you, um, see how cute that is? It matches my, it matches the hello for our classroom. Thank you. Um, now, something I know teachers are always so organized and having being able to put your vinyl on your bins is super helpful. So I have um, created the, the names, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, to put on the bin. Um, I'm just gonna kind of do it right from there. I think you guys can see this. Actually, you know what? Let me do it on the overhead so you can see how it goes on. These little bins are so cute because um, they just store everything and you have, um, you can change it up. Let me see if I bring this over here. I don't know if I've got enough space. So I've got the transfer tape already, Monday's already cut out for me. Make sure I get all my little pieces here. I'm gonna just pop this over here. I had already done this part. 
on this one. Okay, so what I love about the Cricut transfer tape is that it has, is that too close? Okay, it has grids on it. So I can use the grid lines and line up my edge of the bin and the bottom of the bin and make sure that I get it in a consistent place. Now I would normally do this over there so I, I would be able to see, but also these bins, the knobs pull off. So you can, if you want to do something longer, you can do something longer. Or if you want to put something behind your tape first and then come back to it, you can certainly do that. Okay, I have one more vinyl project to show you guys. And I think we're gonna hit it in time. Remember to hang out because we have a super surprise for everybody. And I wanna show you something cool. I have, actually have two more projects, but I don't know if we'll have time to get to that last one. This is um, a round, these rounds. This is an 18 inch round from um, Michael's. You get two of them. And what I love about it is that you have a, uh, like a wood on this side it's already painted white so how easy is that just to put your design on it i used um removable vinyl for her name because again like i mentioned mrs nicely she's a young new teacher if she were to get married she could always take off the nicely or if she wanted to change it and say hello fall hello first graders anything like that she could always change this so for this, I did do some transfer tape on the pencils and I can just pop that off of here. And I think these pencils, I don't, I'm trying to remember if I had to recreate these pencils in design space or if this is, I think this is an existing pencil. All right, now, if you're wondering how to find me on Facebook, if you have questions after the class, um, I have a Facebook page. It's called Kesley.365. And I, I'll try and show you where that is. But if you have questions after the class, because I know we went so fast, um, feel free to reach out to me and I will do my best to answer those questions. Again, my Facebook page is Kesley.365. Okay, so that's with the vinyl tape on there. And then I like for a big piece like this, I don't use the transfer tape. I just use my fingers and put that on there, just like that. So now I have a door frame for her, for her door to work with. Okay, and I'm just gonna show one more thing, if that's okay, Jimena, is that okay? Absolutely, go for it. Okay, <laughs> um, the last thing I'm gonna show, I'm gonna share my screen back in the design space because um, one of the things that my mom didn't have because you know she's retired now but one of the great things i think that my my kids have been able to have the advantage of are whiteboards and the the i've seen teachers with the magnetic on the whiteboards where they're able to change things out so i thought i would show you guys how to cut magnets um so let me go here i've made this custom project here and it has, um, it's just the days of the week with a fun font. I found the font in design space. And then I did the really big offset of it so that I have a nice thick offset. So I, I'll cut the colors out of vinyl and then I use the offset here to cut the magnet. And that's really what I wanna show you is how to cut the magnet. So I'm gonna hide some of these here. We'll hide some of these groups here. I'm just gonna hide them so I'm only cutting one and not cutting all of them. Yes, I will absolutely put these um, projects on my page. I just didn't wanna, I didn't wanna like reveal it before the class. Um, so I, they're on the page and I'll put that on there. Okay, so Anita, can you cut magnet with, uh, yeah, you can cut magnet with an explore machine. You just need, to use a deep, we're gonna use a deep cut blade and it has a magnet setting on there. So you can definitely cut it with an Explorer. I don't think you can cut it with, um, with your Cricut Joy because you need the deeper blade. So let's go ahead. And yes, Jen, this video will be available to watch. I know I went so fast on all this, um, but you can definitely 
um, watch the video. And Barbara, you can change the font to any font you want. I just kind of picked a font that seemed um, very good for elementary school, but I think if I were doing high school or something like that, I might do a different font. So all I need to do is choose my material. So I'm gonna go browse all material and I'm choosing, I'm gonna type in magnet. And sometimes I'll be honest with you guys, sometimes I use magnet paper, magnets um, that I've gotten in the mail for like the car wash or something like that. I'll cut that and then put vinyl over it. So I'm gonna choose the half inch millimeter magnet sheet and it will tell me to put in my deep point blade. So let me show you how that's going to work. The deep point blade is um, a, a blade that's different than your standard blade. So I need to pull this out and we're going to bring in my machine again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Here's this fun. Okay. Now, and the magnet paper you can get at Michael's. Um, so you definitely can, can pick that up at your Michaels. Or like I said, I use things I have around my house sometimes. So I just take out my regular blade. Now this is a maker and you might be used to having the gears, but your deep cut blade is this black casing blade. And if you held it next to your regular blade, you can see that it sticks out deeper. So it lets you go into deeper materials. And this is where like your Cricut Joy will cut up to 50 different materials. Your Cricut Explorer will cut a hundred different materials and your Cricut Maker will cut um, up to 300 different materials. 300, I think it may even be more than 300 right now. So, um, okay, so this is a magnet sheet I have and it's got like magnet on one side and white on the other. I think this may have been for printables, printing photos at one point, um, but I use it for my Cricut stuff. Now, one thing you want to make sure your um, magnet sheet is not gonna move. So I usually would have a brayer, but I'm not quite sure where I put that down. So you really wanna make sure you press that down into your, into your mat, make sure your mat, you have a good clean mat to go. And then, um, so the magnet sheets are available at Michael's. So you can get those from your local store. I just see, I gotta get this. Find my design space with this in there. There we go, okay. So, oh, this is going into the wrong machine, okay. Sorry guys, let me switch up. I have the, the different machine set up to send this to. So let me go ahead and switch this to the Maker 3. I'm gonna make it, okay. And Kesley, I'm just gonna say this out loud so that it is recorded. Yes. Magnetic sheets, there are settings for 0. 0.5 millimeter, 0. 0.6 millimeter, and 0. 0.35 millimeter. You do not want it to exceed that with that uh, deep point blade. Yes, and you could. It should say on the packaging um, what what your blade is. I, I'm not your blade. I'm sorry. It should say on the packaging how thick your magnet material is. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reconnecting my machine here. There we go. Let me find my materials again. I type in magnet um, and I'm gonna just do a point. I, I choose the 0.5 millimeter. You can, um, when you get your material, you want to um, make sure that you, like you can do a little test spot in a, like a little square or circle to make sure it's gonna cut okay. And if you don't need to change your settings or anything. But we're just gonna put that in there and that's gonna cut out for a second. And I'm gonna, that, this is our last project. So while that's going through, I'm just gonna see if I can um, answer any of these questions. Yes, Hindenburg, I'm not sure how you say it. Hive Explore Air, can you do magnets on that? Yes, absolutely. Just set your material to a custom setting and then you can do, um, then you can do the, choose your magnet, the depth of your magnet material to do that. Okay, all right, while that's cutting, let me share my screen again. And I'm just gonna, actually, before I do that, let me pull it up. I'll show you where, again, you can find me on 
um, design space and where you can find me on Facebook. If you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to reach out to me on Facebook. I'm Kesley.365 um, and you'll see my profile picture is the same. So um, let me see if I go to, let's see if I go here, you can see it. Sorry, I just wanna pull it up for you. There we go, okay. So let me share my screen while that's plugging away. So here's my Facebook, it's Kesley.365. And so just look for this logo here and my name and, and my image is the same image on, on the Cricut Design Space. So I'm just gonna pop that up too so you guys know where to find me there. Um, there we go. All right, we cut our magnet. So I'm gonna unload that and then I'll come back and touch that. But if you go on a desktop or laptop to your home screen and you um, just Google, or not Google, type in Kesley, K-E-S-L-E-Y Anderson. My name will pop up and my, some of the projects I've shared. And here we go. Um, you can just find my community members. Oh, it says no community, no results found. What did I do? Oh, I typed it wrong. K-E-S-L-E-Y helps if I type my own name right. Okay. And yes, I, somebody's asking about vent covers. You can use, like I said, I use um, a magnet material from mailers and things like that. Okay, so here it's the same logo, Kesley.365, and my name is right there. So you just can click follow, and then you'll be able to access all of the projects I share. And again, after this class, I will share all those projects and make them live. And we have lots of classes. Every Monday I teach, um, almost every Monday, I teach a Michaels class. So you'll find Anita and myself on Mondays um, and the free classes are recorded. So you can join in. All right, so there is your outline. Now, because of time, I'm just going, I made a bigger one um, and I just added the vinyl onto the magnet. And now I can put that on, you can put that on a smart board or anything like that, your refrigerators. If you're homeschooling, it's great for homeschooling or if you wanna put homework, you can change the font and everything like that. Just, you wanna to remember to add your offset onto there. Whew, guys, you all, what an awesome, amazing, so many good questions I'm seeing through here. Thank you everyone. And don't forget to hang out after the class if you want um, the secret surprise for all of our live attendees. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for being teachers and everything you do. Thank you for supporting teachers. Um, we love it. Cricket loves our teachers. And I just, I love what you all do. So thank you so, so much. Everyone have a great afternoon. And don't forget to watch the recording. <laughs>